Gauteng Provincial Legislature has uh, initiated a repurposing and repositioning of the legislature with a value creation in 2021. This emanated from the appointments of the new executives and a review of the performance of the institution uh, over years, taking into consideration the good work that the institution has been able to do and looking at uh, some of the gaps uh, to fill, to take the institution to a more improved uh, level of uh, efficiency, effectiveness and performance. Uh, this uh, repositioning and repurposing of the legislature takes into consideration the constitutional mandate of the legislature and try to ensure that uh, the, uh, the, the strategies of the legislature respond better to the constitutional mandate of the, of the legislature. It also seeks to respond to the macro and micro uh, factors that uh, affect the legislature. These macro factors include, amongst others, the declining confidence uh, of citizens in public institutions, including the legislature itself, the findings of the Zondo Commission, and the need for the legislatures to be able to uh, respond uh, to that. The fact that uh, the amendments to the Electoral Act, some of those amendments, means there's uh, going to be possibilities of uh, independent members of the legislatures, whilst the legislatures currently only serves uh, represented uh, political parties. So it requires that the legislature should be able to review its processes, uh, systems, policies and strategies to be able to uh, respond to the challenges. So repositioning focuses on three key issues. Firstly, on the purpose, uh, which focuses on the strategy of the legislature. Here, what we're seeking to do is to ensure that uh, the strategies of the legislature become more resilient, more agile, that whatever changes that may occur at both political and uh, administrative level do not ne negatively impact upon the legislature. We see examples of how at local government level changes in uh, both political and administrative level basically brings about uh, disruption. Secondly, we also try to create structures, processes, systems and policies that support the, uh, the strategy of the legislature. And we're basically saying that uh, because the strategy is based on the constitution, unless the constitution fundamentally changes, the strategy will not uh, change. What will change are the tactics, the speed and veloc the velocity with which you have to uh, implement uh, uh, you know, the mandates of the, of the legislature. Secondly, it focuses on the people. Here what we're focusing on is uh, building strong, uh, cohesive uh, teams, uh, reducing the trust deficit between uh, 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 management and uh, organized labor, supervisors and their direct uh, reports, improving the efficiency, effectiveness and productivity uh, of the legislature to be able to respond to the overall impact that it seeks to achieve, which is the improvement of the quality of life of citizens. Uh, we're also focusing on uh, performance uh, of the institution uh, through which we want to ensure that uh, the quality of life of citizens is uh, improved, that support that gets to be provided to citizens enable the elected public representatives to better fulfill their constitutional uh, mandate and through that respond amongst others to the macro challenges that I've spoken about of uh, declining uh, trust uh, in the public uh, institutions, uh, responding to the electoral changes in the uh, Electoral uh, Act, and also responding to the challenges uh, posed by the findings of the Zondo Commission. 
We are also approaching the 30th anniversary of our democratic uh, breakthrough. And it is important that uh, the legislature uh, you know, take a pause and reflect on its contribution to our democracy uh, to date and uh, find ways of uh, enhancing uh, uh, the trust levels of uh, citizens. So amongst the things that we'll be uh, working on, uh, as I've indicated, we'll be looking at uh, the structures uh, of the uh, institution. We also have to respond at micro level to what the organization did prior to COVID, which was the uh, development of the organizational uh, development by the PwC. But that work had to be overtaken by COVID because just on the eve of it being considered for implementation, uh, you know, the uh, COVID uh, struck. So we've taken the best that comes out of uh, uh, the PwC uh, report and started working on the value creation, creating new structures that are better able to respond to the challenges that the institution currently uh, faces. Uh, we do understand as uh, management that uh, this project is uh, quite uh, daunting uh, because it challenges uh, the current way in which uh, we are structured. It challenges the way in which uh, we're going to operate to respond to the challenges the institution uh, faces. So there's a reality that we have that, uh, you know, there are a lot of uh, anxieties. We're also quite anxious as a uh, management and we're empathetic to the fact that, uh, you know, there is going to be a lot of uh, anxiety. There's going to be lots of fears uh, amongst uh, colleagues. Already as we speak, there are colleagues who are negatively impacted upon by the way we are operating. So through this project, amongst other things, we need also to be able to find ways in which we can create new opportunities that don't exist currently uh, in the institution. Um, so we do understand the concerns, the fears, the anxieties, and we are quite empathetic to that. As part of addressing uh, those, we, will be go we have started a broad consultative uh, process. Uh, we already had uh, two sessions uh, with staff. We already had uh, a session with uh, organized labor. Today we had a workshop. Uh, the presentations that we made were noted uh, by labor. There is further uh, a need for engagement again with labor uh, in this, uh, on these matters. Just in terms of uh, consultative uh, processes contained in our uh, communication plan, we're not just looking at uh, you know big staff meetings where everybody uh, comes. We're also looking at uh, smaller uh, engagements where we can be able to bring functions together, you know, in smaller numbers, uh, have engagement uh, in other instances, even in the uh, language other than English, you know, or simplify the processes to enable colleagues to have confidence even of asking uh, questions or raising their own concerns, their own uh, anxieties. We also have created a, an email uh, address uh, for this kind of uh, engagement where colleagues can also be able to you know, uh, submit their questions. So we want to ensure that we have a single point of uh, service for these uh, functions. Also to ensure that the kind of uh, supervision and guidance that you have, you know, uh, you have the key relevant people to be able to provide that support. So those are some of the things that we are uh, aiming uh, uh, to achieve. And what will success uh, look like? Uh, success will look like uh, new structures uh, created, Obviously, the efficiency effectiveness is going to be tested over a period of time. Uh, you know, we're looking at uh, piloting some of the structures. Uh, so obviously, when you pilot, you're going to draw lessons 
uh, also out of those uh, processes. We're looking at uh, a, an organization that will be able to better respond to its constitutional mandate, create confidence amongst the citizens, confidence amongst the employees themselves, confidence amongst the elected public representatives that they can be able to make a meaningful contribution to you know, the quality of, uh, of life of, uh, of citizens. So ultimately what, what we believe will be the best test of this is how citizens view the legislature and how citizens can be able to trust the institution. So all these processes, these policies, these structures that we are creating are not self-serving. They are aimed at ensuring that they meet and exceed the expectations of their citizens.